So hey there, fellows. Here's what I'll be working with today. And the idea is to put it through a tiny bit of abuse. Just the tiniest bit. What exactly will we be doing? We saw people suggesting we fill the cooling system with all sorts of liquid, such as oil, basically whatever we can find. I say it's worth a try. We've done this before. Poured stuff in, flushed the system and so on. As for today, here's what I suggest we do. I'd like to simulate a situation when the engine blows a head gasket, when it has rotten away, for instance. And as a result, two separate systems, cooling and lubrication, start interacting, which ultimately leads to either coolant finding its way into the oil, or the other way around, oil getting into the coolant. Anyway, so let's try getting that to happen. When whatever is keeping those fluids from mixing rots away, or gets displaced, and the two systems become whole. Keep watching to find out what exactly happens in that sort of scenario. Let's do this. What happens when you fill the cooling system with motor oil? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Here's where we're at. We've taken the head off, and here we have the gasket. The engine block is in plain sight. We actually replaced this head gasket fairly recently. And here's what we need to do. Let's try mimicking a situation when the gasket has gone bad, and we've got coolant mixing with motor oil, or vice versa. I gather the engine will figure out for itself which goes where. I mean, we all know <laughs> that every time it's different. Sometimes it's the coolant contaminating the oil, sometimes it's oil in the coolant. It's hard to predict how it's gonna go. We've got a curious little spot here. I think we should maybe... Now, the oil is supplied into the cylinder head at pretty high pressure on a working motor. So I think our best bet would be the return. We've got a coolant passage conveniently right next to it. There it is. All we have to do is hack the gasket somehow. Then we assemble the engine, start it, and I'm sure you can see where this is going. Okay, now there's the matter of... ruining the gasket. Well, if the experiment calls for it. And after assembly, we look on to see how the engine behaves. So either oil contaminates the coolant, or the other way around. We've put it back together, everything is looking good. You would have seen us damaging the gasket. And now the two channels are interconnected. It happens on older gaskets. Now we just fill the engine with oil, pour in some coolant, fire up the car, and hope that the coolant... The antifreeze, or are we gonna be using water? I haven't decided yet. Anyway, that it'll find its way into the motor oil. Or vice versa. We've mutilated the gasket next to the oil drain, where there shouldn't be too much pressure. I am pretty confident that it's gonna be the coolant making its way into the oil. We will be keeping an eye on the oil to see what happens to it, but I'm sure you can picture that for yourselves anyway. It should become emulsified, though I have heard that modern oils don't do that. I do find that hard to believe, but we are about to see if that's true or not. Alright, it's time to fill and fire it up. Well, it works. That's nice. It does have the shivers, though. Oh, the engine's cold. We'll let it warm up, then. Can't get around that, can we now? And after that, we have a look. Okay, we've let it run till it's warm. The engine is nice and hot. Time to check up on it and see how it's doing. Were we even successful? So far, the engine isn't overheating. It just gets up to normal running temperature and everything is good. But there's still... one more thing to deal with. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Shut her off. Let's have a look at what's going on down here. What have we got? Oh my! Look! That's some serious emulsification. And the level... is two or three times higher than it should be. Wait a second. Nope, there's the max level. 
and the current level goes up to here. 30 mil above the maximum. So the coolant found its way into the oil, which is what we were looking to achieve. So yeah, looks like we're doing good. Open up. Now that's a downer. <laughs> Which is to say that there's nothing in there. At this level you can see the cells. That's a serious loss. So the coolant made it into the block. And the oil has emulsified, despite what I've heard about modern oils not turning bright. Uh-huh, yeah, right. That's not what I'm seeing. Seriously, have a look. This does not look like motor oil. Not even close. It is severely emulsified. That's actually a good thing. Straight away you get visual confirmation that the motor is contaminated with coolant. Good. Since that's the situation we're dealing with... By the way, I should mention that the car wasn't even overheating. Since there is at least a bit of coolant left in there. It's not much, but still. Anyway, so the gasket let go. We've got coolant in the oil. But what if we try... We did see a few people suggesting to pour oil into the radiator, so let's do just that. Fill the cooling system with oil, and if it makes it into the block, what's gonna happen? The engine is simply gonna work. Not gonna feel a thing. You've got oil in there, right? And the fact that there's no water in there, well, that just doesn't matter. This will allow us to connect the two systems, lubrication and cooling. And as I'm sure you're well aware, oil isn't just about lubrication. It's also good at soaking up heat, so it should help keep the engine from overheating. This should work one way or another, I think. Okay, let's get to it. We fill the cooling system. But first we have to drain that emulsified oil. Then we flush the motor, fill it up with oil again, pour some oil into the cooling system while we're at it, and look on to see what happens. Right, fellas, we've put everything back together. One thing I should mention is that we removed the cylinder head again. In order to slice the head gasket in one more spot, where you've got oil coming into the head under high pressure. As for why we decided to do that, well... So in our case, the drain works in such a way so that the... fluid from the cooling system makes its way into the lubrication circuit. Problem is that that's a one-way street. And so we fixed that problem by cutting another passage for the oil to be able to return from the oil galleries and back into the cooling system. So yeah, let's just imagine that the gasket let go in two spots at once. So we filled the whole lot with oil. As some of you requested, we even did the cooling system. Okay, we're ready for some testing. I'm gonna go for a drive to see how this thing behaves. We're off to an okay start. Everything is nice. Nothing horrible is happening so far. The car is happily moving along. Everything is completely normal. Though I should keep an eye on the temperature gauge. Come on, keep going. Come on now. Nice. The temperature is stable. The needle on the gauge is staying in place. Alright fellas, so after driving with an oil-filled cooling system, here's the situation. Through all of those passages that we made, which imitate a blown head gasket, allow me to demonstrate something. The coolant was making its way into the oil through the drain channel. The oil was leaking as well, but... The level hasn't changed. Which can only mean that... 
You know, the thought actually occurred to us by accident to make an additional small passage right next to the high-pressure oil supply channel. And that idea seems to have made for some pretty interesting results. Now, this is all speculation, but... So at that end of the engine, the oil just drips back into the pan. Back down into the sump, right? But here... Well, since the oil pump does generate a bit of pressure inside the lubrication system of this here motor, through that tear in the gasket next to the high-pressure oil passage, the excess pressure seems to be squeezing oil back into the cooling system, making for a bit of circulation. I mean, at the very least, the level is staying put, and the car ain't overheating. Though I was anticipating that moment, I was waiting for the vents to start blowing hot air. Though it turns out that before we did that first round, the guys blocked the heater core off to keep it from clogging up with the emulsified oil. So the heater wasn't working anyway. In any case, the engine runs, the car drives, it doesn't overheat, it just works like it's meant to. The temperature is on point. So ultimately, what does all of this mean? It means that apparently the oil is soaking up a considerable amount of that heat. I'd also like to mention that the heater fan on this car is completely trashed, as in all of the blades are broken on it. You see, the engine just wasn't heating up in minus 40 degrees. And after all of those blades came off, now the engine is once again able to get up to the right temperature. Not as cold today, at about minus 10 degrees Celsius, but the fact of the matter is that this engine didn't overheat even after I just went out for a pretty long drive. So if your motor oil becomes contaminated with coolant, drop it, block off the heater core, fill the system with oil, and go find a repair shop. There aren't any horrible consequences of mixing oil with oil after all. That was actually pretty cool. You wanted it, we did it. So the car doesn't overheat when you've got oil in the cooling system, and with a blown head gasket you've just got oil mixing with oil with no adverse effects. The engine just works, and that's all there is to it. I think that's a good place to end today's cheerful story, fellas. That's all I have for you, watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.